In this video, we're going to go ahead and set up our basic enemy and a basic enemy spawner. We're not going to be doing too much with them right now. We're just going to go ahead and set it up so we actually have something we can hit with our line trace and then work on it from there. So to get started, let's create a new folder under blueprints called enemy so we can put our spawner and our enemy inside of there. So in terms of a spawner, what I mean by that is it's going to be a blueprint that simply spawns our enemies. So that way we have maybe multiple spawners in our level and then we can have multiple enemies that pop up as our targets. Now originally this was just going to be a little bit of a target practice, but as you saw from the introduction video, I went ahead and made our targets move to give it a little more life. So let's just create a new blueprint under actor and we'll call this one the enemy spawner. And of course we're going to need an enemy so let's go ahead and do that while we're here. Now even though this is an enemy we're not really going to be doing much with it. It's more like a target that simply moves on its own and that we're going to shoot at. We don't need it to be a character because we're not going to have it move or walk around. We don't need it to be a pawn because we're not going to give it any AI. So we'll go ahead and just do actor and we'll call this the enemy. Now let's go ahead and set up our enemy itself. Enemy is going to be pretty simple. Let's go ahead and close down our... Actually, let's go ahead and do something that we talked about in the last one. I forgot about this. In our project settings under rendering, we're going to want to go ahead and turn on instance stereo. Go ahead and check this and hit restart now. Save anything we've created. And what's going to happen is it's going to restart. Now, depending on how many materials you have, this may take a little while to recompile. Since we didn't really have too much, it didn't obviously take too long to do it. Now, if you notice in our scene, we had nothing in the beginning. We had nothing because our materials were recompiling. Now that they're done, we're good to go. Let me go ahead and close our editor and project settings and open back up our enemy. So our enemy is just going to consist of basically a sphere and that sphere is going to be our target. So let's go ahead and add a scene component. And I'm gonna name this root, and I'm gonna drop this onto my default scene root, scene root, scene, default scene to replace it. Now that we have a root, let's go ahead and add a sphere, and we'll just call it sphere because why not? And we'll go ahead and resize this down to something a little more appropriate like 0.3. Now, since I've gone ahead and unlocked this, I had to type in all three of them. Now, you might be thinking, well, let's make it look more like an alien or a spaceship or something. Maybe we want it more along the lines of something like this, where it's flat. If you do this, if you're not making it a uniform scale, you're going to end up having an issue with our collision because we're using just a default mesh. We're not using anything special. Your collision is more going to fall along the lines of our smaller value. So we're going to have a tiny circle in the middle and everything else will not be collidable. So let's go ahead and make this 0.3 on all sides so we can make sure it's a perfectly round sphere and we have a perfectly round collision. Let's go ahead at this point and make a new material for it. And this one should be pretty simple. Let's do material. We'll do enemy material. Hold down three, we now have a basic color. Put it into emissive. I want this to be red, so we'll make red one, green zero, blue zero, or any color you want, but I want red. Hit apply, save, and we'll close this down. Once we're done, we can go back to our enemy. We'll change its material back to the enemy. Now you notice we have a bunch of options. Since we're done in our side of our engine, we can go ahead and shut off the engine content make our list a little smaller and there we go there is our basic enemy we've gone ahead and we've set it up and that's pretty much all we need to do for our enemy now we need our spawner now our spawner is basically going to spawn our enemies when we tell it to so how do we set that up well let's find our enemy spawner blueprint first and we'll go ahead and pull it up for editing Keep in mind, if it did show you nothing was in there because we started in the middle of this, just hit the open full editor and you'll get the full editor back. 
Let's delete everything by default because why not? And let's hook up our events for spawning. Now, what should we do here? In the future, we're going to make this where it actually spawns and it uses some coding. But for now, basically, we just want something to spawn. Now, when I say spawn, it's pretty simple. We're basically going to use the spawn actor node. This one right here. Spawn actor from class. And we're going to spawn class enemy. Whoops. Class enemy. And we're going to spawn an enemy. Pretty simple. If we were to go ahead and save this and run it, we'll get no error because we're not actually doing it. Let's go up to scene. Name this root. Remember I told you I like doing this because it makes it simpler. Because if we don't, we have this little funny guy. And we'll boom. There we go. Now we have nothing, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Bad thing, we can't see where it's going to be. For example, let's take our character here and let's put... Our enemy spawner right here and you'll notice well we can't see the enemy spawner well we can't see the enemy spawner because we have no visible indicator but that's easy enough add component billboard and it's gonna add this nice little dino dude from the original unreal days if we go back into our viewport now we have him as a basic billboard and we can see where our spawner's at one thing that's nice is that will only show up when you are in the editor it will not show up when you're in the game. So now we can see where our enemy spawner is and we can actually do something. Let's go ahead and on begin play because why not? Let's spawn an enemy and we'll do this for testing purposes. We'll compile this and we'll get an error. Well, this is pretty simple. We're not telling it where to spawn at. The nice thing is since we have a root, we can get the world transform. So we'll look for get world transform. We'll plug it into our spawn transform. Now for here, collision handling override, we want to change this not from default, but change it to always spawn, ignore collisions. This way, it's not going to cause us a problem now, but if, for example, we were to take our spawner and move it into the wall or outside the wall, we go on to make sure that something's going to spawn no matter what. We're not going to have that issue earlier, like with our controllers and we were stuck because our controllers collided with each other and then never spawned. Let's go ahead and save this and run this. And here's where we're going to run into a small issue. Where is that item at? And let's look around. And we're actually going to find it's behind us. So one thing you're going to want to do when you're developing like this, there's a couple things. Inside of your Steam VR, Inside the setup, when you originally set it up, you point at your monitor, which indicated where your monitor was at. And what it did there is it set up the opposite direction as your starting direction. So in my case, my monitor is here, and my starting direction is going to be here. So if I turn my camera to face the monitor direction here, and set up my cable without it cooperating, here we go. So this is roughly where my monitor direction is. And we stop, and then we see where it is in relationship to here. This is our character, and keep in mind we have our X starting point right there. Let's take our spawn point and move him over here so we can see him. And let's go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice we don't see it. If we turn around our headset, we can see it. So what I'm basically pointing out is... When you set up your Steam VR and it asked you where your monitor was, it set up the opposite direction as your starting default rotation. So if I was to turn around for my monitor right now, look behind me, and then start this application up, this is my character here, this is his starting arrow, and this is going to be the starting position basically if I was appropriately facing my starting direction. So let's go ahead and hit play. And then this way from now on, when we're testing, I'm going to have it set up where my head mounted device is facing my starting direction, according to Steam VR in my chaperone area. And it's going to be based on the starting player rotation here. So now in the future, keep that in mind. If you're trying to orient where your player is going to start, technically you can never know for sure, but 
Steam does provide you, based on the setup, where a starting position should be. Not should. Starting rotation should be. So keep that in mind. So for example, we're going to go ahead and do that. So as you can see there, we actually have something and we have a little target. Let's let's move our target over a little bit and move him in a little bit. We'll go ahead and hit play and there we go. We actually have a target. Now if I was to go into the game and I was to start firing at my target and to actually turn on the controller so the controller works again and start firing at my target, which right now I'm horribly aiming. You'll notice it's firing, and if we aim like that, you'll notice it's actually going to hit. If you look in the background, you can actually see a few green traces. Red traces indicate no hit. Green traces, if I can aim my gun better, I'm actually shooting backwards, so that's not helping. There we go. You can actually see some green traces. There we go. You'll see a little bit of green trace. That indicates we hit the sphere. Now nothing's happening because we haven't set up anything. That will be in our next video. But for now, we have a target. We have a target that is in our scene. We have a target that can be spawned by our spawner. We are not actually reacting to it yet, but we will do that. In our next video, we will be creating an event basically that will handle us hitting our target and then destroying it so that way we can verify that it is working.